I spend a lot of time doing what's called Monte Carlo simulations. This is where you generate a lot of random instances and you try to understand collectively what might happen. I really love being able to use Julia for, for Monte Carlo as a user because I can grab as many processors as I need. This really lends itself to, to lots of parallelism. Uh, I can grab shared memory, distributed memory, computers from anywhere, put them all together and uh, a computer way. To, to, so, so when you use one processor, it, it's like having a magnifying glass. You could see a little bit. But when I compute with Julia, I feel like I've got an electron microscope. I've got power that uh, people who aren't using Julia or using computing in this way, they don't have it. So I, I feel like I've got sort of the, 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 this, big, the, the, this big technology that, you know, for, for a little while it's all mine and I love having that. Monte Carlo simulations are used all over the place. They're used in, in science and physics. The financial industry has taken them by storm. They're, they're doing a lot of Monte Carlo simulations these days. Uh, you, one example that, that they use it for is you want to figure out a world where uh, there are scenarios where a stock market goes up and as well as scenarios where a stock market goes down. You want to roll the dice and play out all of these scenarios and understand kind of the, the portfolio of futures that might happen. And so that's where the financial industry would, would use it. Uh, but physics people do it to figure out theoretically the, the mass of an atom. Uh, I do it to understand this, this random matrix theory that I love to do so much. That's also a rather theoretical topic. Uh, but it, 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 it can be used both for pure science as well as for serious applications like, like the financial industry. There's two big subjects in math that, that, that traditionally had not so much to do with each other. There, there's probability, which I think everybody understands the importance of understanding probability. Uh, and there's also linear algebra, which is the, the it's, it's the study of, of systems of equations. Most people remember learning how to solve two equations and two unknowns and somewhere maybe in ninth grade and maybe in high school, better high schools, I'm not sure, maybe better high schools teach you to do three equations and three unknowns. Well, in linear algebra, we teach people to do millions of equations of millions of unknowns. And, um, we need big supercomputers to do that. Um, it's not just equations, it's, it's, it's also structural problems. It, it comes in handy in many, many ways. Random matrix D is the marriage of probability and this linear algebra. It, it's kind of a new area, uh, though it's been around for a little while, but it's a kind of new area that itself is, is finding applications. Uh, if I could say one quick word about why random matrix theory is exciting, I'll, I'll tell you this. Uh, most people know that if you take a large population, maybe people, you measure their heights or you take, their, take, you take tests, you get this bell curve. Everybody knows about the bell curve. There's this, there's, there's this normal distribution of this bell curve that keeps showing up. I think this bell curve must have been known even before mathematicians proved what's called the central limit theorem, which tells you that everything's going to be a bell curve. Well, random matrix theory nowadays are finding all kinds of new distributions that are showing up everywhere if you look at them. It's a little bit like a world where this bell curve is showing up and we still don't know exactly why. We know somewhat, but we still don't know exactly why these things are, are coming up all over the place. And so we're kind of back hundreds of years, like, like people noticing this bell curve. And, and we know the math, but we don't understand why it's showing up everywhere. So that's, that's kind of why random matrix theory is exciting.